Hi guys, I'm Avalon. Uh, you can call me Aya. I also go by BJ Big Kid or Raven Angel. And I'm going to show you how to make visuals on Resolume. Um, so I've been VJing for a few years now and the way that I like to do it is to automate images and use 3D objects sometimes um, in a render and sometimes found footage on my own. But I'm going to focus more on automating images because I want to show how to create textures that can align with music. So visuals go with music, whether you're doing it for a DJ set, a singer, or a band. You want to catch the same vibe. So you wouldn't exactly play the same visuals that you would for an ambient set as you would for an industrial techno set, you know? Um, or heavy metal compared to indie rock. Um, so that's kind of like the gist of it. Um, so when you're doing visuals and you mix, you want to make sure that you're catching when things have a certain emotion. Um, so if it sounds calm, you should probably play something that doesn't have that much motion and that's a little bit slower and more gentle. And same for like if something's really dynamic and like, things are about to drop, then maybe you want something that will shake up the room, you know? Um, so how do you do that visually? Well, um, let's do a little activity. Uh, take a piece of paper and cut it up into four. And for each one of the squares, draw a certain type of emotion, whether it's abstract or figuratively, that's up to you. It's all subjective anyway. But whatever speaks to your core. And once you have those, take a picture of the image and import them into Rizalum. And we'll use them into uh, the clips. Um, so I did something on a tablet and I cut them up into four, and I have different types of emotions here. One's more uh, calm, and some are a little bit more vibrant. So these would go along with uh, different types of music. But first, let's do a test. Can you tell me which one is Kiki and which one is Viva? Take your time. No rush. If you think that one is Viva, this one is Kiki, 90% of people usually say, so you're in the majority. Say it the other way around, maybe your crosswire is a little bit different than others. Or maybe you have um, difficulty with metaphors. Uh, or even have aphantasia, uh, the lack of uh, in inner mind's eye. Um, so why am I even showing these guys? Well, um, a neuroscientist our neurologist, um, B.S. Ramachandran, created this test to demonstrate the connection between language and synesthesia and metaphor and synesthesia. And so the sound book, for some reason, we make this association that it's like more bubbly. And then key sounds sharp. So these associations turn into shapes. So if you use this type of technique and relate it to the associations that you get, you use the sounds into a visual, you'll be able to make some pretty interesting visuals. 
for example. Um, why is it that uh, you start saying things like, I'm feeling blue? Blue is a cold feel, but why do we make this connection? It's a common association that a lot of people have, and it has some aesthetic properties. Um, and the same thing for warm colors, they're a little bit more dynamic, they make you feel a different way. And so if you use this within visuals, then you make people feel a certain way. So this visual, for example, feels a little bit more cool and calm. While this one is agitated and frustrated. And with this red, it kind of makes you have that association of like less fire, right? So there's there's something that's like deadly to it. So why is it that I'm into synesthesia? I actually have synesthesia. Uh, I have the thin color synesthesia, and I see the alphabet and numbers with help. These are actually my own uh, vision of uh, So when I read, sometimes it's a little bit um, difficult because colors are starting to merge and stuff, so it becomes a bit draining. But it also helps with my memory sometimes, because uh, then I uh, remember passwords or dates, right? So most of the time, I'm really good at remembering my son's birthdays. <laughs> but I'm not saying that you're going to suddenly start seeing colors in your words and stuff. Maybe you already do, and you just didn't realize. Um, but I'm not saying that you're going to develop this type of synesthesia. I'm trying to make you focus on the type of synesthesia that you already possess, these types of connections that you already have, and maybe have them utilizing to its full potential. Painters tend to use these a lot for uh, reasons of like creating feeling with them. So I want to be able to help you make that connection of using these textures and using these palettes to make people feel something uh, within the music. So if you can find the connection between what the sounds are giving you and what you can display, then it's going to feel more connected. Um, and here's where it went. First of all, you need to know where to you store your files and where to save your composition and where to get your effects. You can even add sources and use your webcam. I don't know if this will work since I'm using my webcam for recording. Mm, yeah, I won't. But you can even put visuals over a webcam. You can even use the sources that they give you. Um, so let's see some of the visuals that I prepped. Um, here you can fade in and even time the fade. So let's put a little timer on that one. And maybe this one too. And so this one I kept an alpha channel. And so you can actually see through it, even if I put it on the highest of um, opacity. And I could even transform that. If I change it, it's kind of like Photoshop, you know. Um, but think of it for like video. I think difference is nice usually. Mm, it doesn't make such a difference. Oh, usually it's on the half, right? Um, yeah. So depending on what kind of visual would go underneath it, it would switch. So it looks different on these. Yeah. 
this one would be for a more dynamic set. Things are like shaking up. So how did I make these? Well, first, when you go into your clip, um, when you add your effect, you just drag it on. Um, so let's say we want to add an effect of this guy here. Maybe we want to glitch him up. So let's put a little shift glitch over that. And we can fine tune it by going into timeline. So whenever you see a little triangle that appears here, you'll be able to automate the parameter. And that goes for anything over there too. Um, so this is a little bit much. I'll take off the glitch. I think it looks cute this way. So you can use certain layers like this and you can trigger these layers too. So let's say the song's about to start and it's so calm. So this rises up and it's really cute. And then suddenly there's a part in the song that starts getting a little bit more hype. That's when you can switch it over. But see, there wasn't really a timer on this. So if we put a little bit more of a timer on it, it would have been a little bit smoother. But keeping that idea of like transitioning into certain levels of movement, I feel like that's a more, um, has more emotional impact on people than if you were just beat matching to like do metric things. Um, in my case and in my style. It depends for everybody, right? Um, I don't necessarily try to beat much, but if you wanted to, you could just tap right here and change the BPM and just write it in um, and multiply that or divide it and uh, so on. Um, if you wanted to preview your uh, what you did without showing it, you can just click on its name and then it'll show in the preview down there. All right, so I want to talk about sources. Um, so I refreshed uh, Resolume so that I could use the webcam. And uh, I want to show that in sources, you can use a lot of like integrated uh, Materials, think of it like that, like an artist makes materials, and there's a lot of materials that you can use within the sources. So uh, you can connect things like a camera or a webcam and um, mess with the effects on those. So right now, I'm having a video feed of myself, but you could have a video feed of a crowd, for example. So that could be useful if you want to be able to have something that's kind of interactive or like um, you want to be able to uh, show the singer uh, through certain types of clips, you know. Um, so that can be an effective way of doing something. You can even use feedback loops on it. So the camera is looking at... Uh, the singer and the projection, so it shows it a bunch of other times um, behind itself, and that can be a really trivial effect um, that you might want to use, or maybe your client wants to use. Um, so now you know how to make that happen. And then, uh, secondly, I'd also want to show you guys how to. Um, map controls. Um, so you go into mapping and basically anything that you can find that has like this highlight, you can associate it to a button or knob on a controller. Um, and so you can uh, not have to use like the, the mouse. Um, 
I personally like using the mouse better, but that's up to you. If you feel like you're more comfortable being able to activate things with buttons, um, I'd say do that. Um, also, if you sometimes it's even better to do that if you're actually preparing like a large set where the artist knows you and the artist are in cahoots, let's say, and you know exactly what song to play and all that. That's a lot of planning, but it's worth it. Um, once you do that, actually. Um, but a lot of the time, artists that hire you don't actually uh, practice with you. So um, it, that I don't use it a lot um, because most of the time people don't actually know what they're playing. <laughs> like DJs, for example, they won't know what they're playing until that day. So most of the time, I'd say people who do know what their set list is like and what their songs are going to be and to practice with them, that's when using a control becomes more useful. Um, unless you have a very set known like playlist or composition that you have um, where you want to activate certain columns, um, or layers, uh, that could be helpful. Um, and here's another tip. Um, if you're feeling lazy or you're actually super prepared and you know um, how things are going to mesh together, then you can go into autopilot here on your layer and uh, go either random or forward or backwards. And so, if you use the timer, you can use the fading rate. Um, and so that will time things accordingly. So I find that the timer and the autoplay um, are more useful when you're doing it for an installation, for example. So like that, you have a set uh, type of composition and like loops that you're going to use. And um, there's no point in mixing them live kind of thing. It's more about creating an atmosphere. In this sense, then you can just put it on uh, autoplay and maybe on randomize if you have them accordingly, like they, you know that they just like mesh really well or put them uh, side by side and then they're going to play once and then go through and then fade to the next. Um, so that can be very useful um, for installation, or if you're really lazy at a show. But I don't really tend to use that because um, I have so many types of moods that I have within uh, a composition for shows that I'd be too scared that something that doesn't align with the mood would play during the wrong timing. So I would rather keep a loop going uh, for as long as possible uh, until I know that it's uh, the next loop that I want to play. So I'm going to show you how to do mapping. Um, you go into output and into advanced and that's going to display the screen that you have on the projector. Um, so you take this slice and you go to your output transformation and you'll use the edit points instead of uh, transform. Well, you can transform it first and then fine tune it in edit points actually. Um, depending on if you want it to be um, rounder or um, more jagged, you switch to like busier or linear depending which. And um, you can add some subdivisions to like fine tune it even more. Um, so let's say you wanted to round this out a little bit um, like that. It's um, think of it as like changing your canvas from square to a sort of tondo. Um, a round canvas. And like that, you're getting off the idea of having uh, a uh, 
a square. Like when we are on the computer, we're looking at windows. Those are square. When we're looking at a canvas, sometimes most of the time they're just these rectangles. Those are square, right? So we're very used to the idea of the screen. Um, so if you change that, sometimes it really gives a different impact, you know, even just making it into a triangle or a trapezoid really like changes the effect, you know? So like, if you wanted it to be like this kind of like egg or an oval, maybe it's like a portal into another world, you know? So let's duplicate this quick, quick. Um, maybe if we use transformation, we'll do it perfectly. There we go. And so now we have our egg portal. <laughs> um, anyway, so I made it more symmetrical because people love symmetry. And you don't have to make it symmetrical, but uh, usually it's more appealing to the eyes and the senses. Um, and it makes it really trippy. So. <laughs> People love kaleidoscopes, and if you don't want it to look like a kaleidoscope, get away from that. Don't do it that way. But you can make it into different types of pillars, let's say. You know, um, maybe there's pillars in the room and you just want those to light up, you know. Or maybe you want to do the ceiling instead, so you'll put a third layer at the top, you know, and then make it into like a, a pyramid. Um, there's so many possibilities. Um, so one important thing is to remember to save and close once you have that done. Um, when you're putting in files in Resolum, just remember that um, it only can take certain types of files. So you have to have the right codec for video formats. Um, so .mov and uh, I think it's DXV or DV, uh, <laughs> DXV3 or DVX3. I, I forget which one it is. But anyways, you can get that on Resolume Alley. Uh, you can switch them onto uh, Resolume Alley. And it'll even keep the alpha channel for you if you want. You can even switch uh, GIFs into Resolume Alley and you'll have .mobs, uh, MOV. Uh, with QuickTime, so remember to have QuickTime on your computer so that you can run that. Um, it won't take MP4s, and you can, I think on Resolume 6 you can put in GIFs, but um, not in the version that I'm using. So I tend to use PNG because you can use alpha channels with it, and it has pretty much the best quality compared to JPEG. It kind of really compresses everything and uh, I want it to feel as clear as possible. Um, I use images because the computers that I have, I don't actually have like that much of a budget. So if you have a low budget like I do, then you should probably uh, use images as well or else you're going to have a lot of lag. And so if you want to make sure that things aren't lagging, you want to keep tabs on your frame rate. And so to do that, um, you go into output and then you do show FPS. So frames per second will show up that way. Um, right now my frame rate is pretty low compared to usual because um, I'm recording right now. So usually it doesn't go under uh, 20 frames, um, but it's still enough to like have the illusion of movement. And that's pretty much what you need. Um, I would say um, if you don't know what you're looking at and you want to explore more, just remember that um, whatever you can hover over, this guy right here, uh, he'll help you out. So now we know that's a video effect. And that's where the directory chooser is, uh, and so on and so forth. Like, if you don't know what you're about to click, this is probably the most important thing. So, um, that will help you explore uh, the software better. Um,
Yeah, so to conclude, I'd say try to practice listening into music and listening into those cues that music will give you as to where the music is going and shifting to. Even listening to DJ mixes can help you see how to transition into the next song and so on. Um, and so that could be very, very useful and helpful when you're just starting out. Um, and like that, you'll just get better with time, right? It's all about practicing. So as long as you practice and you kind of find your own style, that that'll be that'll be nice um and don't forget to have fun if you think it's too tedious then uh, maybe you're not looking at it the right way <laughs> um so uh this was a pretty basic tutorial i didn't really go into anything that was like super technical and so i'm sorry if this is what you were looking for <laughs> this isn't it but I feel like what should be more developed in a DJ is connecting to the emotional uh, realm of the music and listening to the language and to transfer that energy into the visuals. So if you think that's important to you, then try adding it in and you'll see the big difference. It won't look like a playlist that someone's just playing in the background. It'll actually have this connection to what is going on and it'll create more of a, a cohesive environment, you know? So that's, that's pretty much what I have to say. If you have any other questions, you can find me on Instagram, aya.avalon, or on Facebook, aya.avalon. Um, and uh, maybe I'll see you at a show. See ya!